Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to connect Amazon, FBA and Shopify. So if you're an Amazon seller and you think, right, I need to set up a Shopify store, I want to start taking you back a bit more control, uh, I think it's a really sensible move. So yeah, I've spoken about this in a number of our most popular videos about Amazon and Shopify. So I thought I would actually show you an example for a brand idea I've got, how we'd actually go ahead and connect the two. Okay, so hopefully this is going to be a really useful tutorial for you. If you're interested in this sort of content, make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn on the notifications bell and you'll be the first to know about useful videos just like this. They drop every week. And if you've got any questions, just ask away in the comments below and I'll see if I can help you out. Okay, so really straightforward. What we want to do is sign ourselves up for a free trial. Now, if you want to sign up and you want to give this a go for yourself, I'd really appreciate it if you use the link in the description to sign up for your free trial. If you do use that, we will a commission if you go on to sign up but it's how we keep this channel running and it's only fair that I mentioned the commission side of things so yeah this is all you do so we're in Shopify here I've entered my email address password and my store name I'm going for is unusual candles because well to be honest I for a little while have thought about one day maybe setting up some sort of a candle brand and I thought a range of really weird candles might be quite fun to do. So yeah, we're just going to run with that idea. So let's create the store. It takes a little while just to sort of set up the, the basics in the background, but fairly quickly we'll be showing the Shopify screen and I can show you the next steps. So for me here, I'm just going to put, I'm just playing around. You can do that too if you're just testing things out. And they've got loads of options to help you do stuff. Uh, we're going to leave all of that unticked. Uh, what is your current revenue? I'm just getting started. Which industry? I'm just going to put other. Okay. Are you setting up a store for a client? No, this is all us. I'm just going to pause this while I actually set up and just input some of these details because you don't need to see all this boring stuff. Okay. So this is what it will look like once you've done all of that. And they really do actually walk you through it. So you can see our store name in the top corner, uh, unusual candles and yeah, I think probably the only things to talk about here, we're not going to go through and do it all because it's going to be different for all of us. But we'll start by adding the first product so I can talk through the actual connection of the Amazon side of things. Obviously, if you're building your own Shopify store, what you will want is your own domain. So you could go to somewhere like GoDaddy or Namecheap to buy yourself a domain. You can basically very easily connect your custom domain to your Shopify store. So when people visit, for us, it might be unusualcandles.com. They would come straight to our Shopify store because yeah, Shopify is just basically a website builder. Okay, so let's start with adding uh, our first product. And what we're going to do here is just put in some example things. So six pack roast beef candles, unusual candles. Because, yeah, I just thought a brand of really weird candles like roast beef, but you can go so many places with this. It can be quite an interesting little niche. So, yeah, if any of you go ahead and steal my niche idea for unusual candles, that domain's probably available. If you do do that, I'll have to think of another idea. Uh, we'll just change the name up. So, but anyway, uh, example description, we'll just put in there. We uploaded a picture of the candle. This is not my image. So yeah, this is just a completely random one I found for this example. Now, product type. So this might be, for example, if you were to sell a clothes store, you would have a load of different varieties of products like shirts, maybe jumpers, vests, things like that. But I'll just keep it simple. We might have a, a different range of candles, but we'll enter our brand name here, unusual candles. Collections, we don't have one of these yet. We could call this limited edition and we could add that to our homepage. And then you might tag any relevant tags to these products. So if these were roast beef, you know, any specific flavors, uh, food candles, because they smell like food, you get the idea. So we tag it up. This is what we do. Obviously, you'd fill all, the, all of this out to actually fit your product. Now, pricing. Uh, let's say that for this example, you sold this product for $30. You've got a 30% profit margin. So for each candle you sell, you would make $10 because that, that keeps things nice and easy. Now, if you were selling it at that level on Amazon, what you might want to do on Shopify is price it a little bit higher and include free shipping or price it at the same amount and include shipping anyway. So what I would probably do here is stick with the $30 and I wouldn't worry about compare at price there because what we're going to be saving 
by using Shopify is we're not going to be paying Amazon's referral fees. Um, if we decide to use Amazon's FBA network, we will be paying their fulfillment fees, but you don't have to use them. Okay, and I'll talk more about that shortly. So cost per item, uh, we'll just say $10. So what we've got there is quite a decent margin. So if this is costing us $10, and we're selling it for 30. That's much more than the example margin I gave, but let's just roll with this. So if that's our all-in cost for the item, okay, then what we're going to have there is a profit of $20 for every candle we sell, which means we can spend up to $20 to acquire a customer to come and purchase on our Shopify store. Now, that's important because when you sell on Amazon, well, you're, you're leveraging Amazon's huge marketplace. They've got customers going on there every day, and that's why you pay Amazon because they've got the customer retention. If you're building your own Shopify store, it's a bit like building a shop in the middle of the desert. Unless people know about you, you need to get people to your store. So you're going to need some amount and the higher margin you can afford, obviously the better, to run ads basically. I have created, put together and run ads to acquire your customer. So we know for every unit we sell, in this case, we can spend up to $20 to acquire them and break even, okay? And you might be saying, why would I want to break even? I want to make profit. Well, what we would then try and do is increase our average order value, okay? The lifetime value of the customer because when a customer comes to purchase from us, if we've set up our Shopify store in the right way, we might offer them upsells. We might offer them different flavor candles and lots of stores are happy to break even, especially if it's a competitive niche, on that initial purchase because they know statistically on the whole, customers usually buy more than say one candle. Maybe that you say buy two, save 20%, all sorts of interesting things. And yeah, this is what it all comes down to when a niche starts to get traction and other competitors start to find it. It really is who can spend the most money to acquire that customer. Okay. So anyway, I could go on about this for absolutely ages. I won't because it might be boring, but it's just something to think about. You will obviously save money on Amazon's fees by selling on Shopify, but you will need to, unless, unless of course you've got an existing audience, but you will need to spend to get in front of those customers. So if you've got an email list, brilliant. If you've got a big social media following, brilliant. You can start to leverage those assets because you've actually got customers. But the main reason people want to sell on Shopify is that they want to hold some of the customer data. When we sell on Amazon, they're actually Amazon's customers. We're just selling them our products, okay? So SKU stands for Stock Keeping Unit. And what I would do is copy the SKU that you have inside of Amazon for your Amazon product. It keeps it easy. So to find that, you would go into Manage Inventory and you can just copy that in. So let me just enter an example here. So I've just used some random examples here, uh, but that's what you would want to copy. Say this was the Amazon product that you sold. Okay, this is the exact product we want to then load into Shopify. You're going to need to find that SKU. And yeah, just keep it the same because it makes it far easier for you to track uh, and manage things as you scale up. Same with the barcode. You'll have to have used a barcode, a GS1 probably, to create your Amazon listing. So just enter that there. So you'll find both of these details within your Amazon Seller Central account for that particular product. Now, track quantity. I always leave that ticked. Continue selling when out of stock. I leave that unticked. And quantity, it will actually sync to Amazon uh, FBA if that's what you plan to do. But you could put in, you know, however many stocks units you've got if you didn't do that. But we're asking it to track quantity so we can leave that there. This is a physical product. Yep. You can, of course, sell digital products on Shopify. Uh, weight wise, we're going to go for five pounds. Probably completely wrong. And customs information. So this is only really going to be relevant if you are shipping internationally. Okay. But we usually like to enter it anyway. So in this case, we will say this is made in the United States. Uh, to find your harmonized system code, you just need to head on to the, if you're selling in the US, the harmonized tariff schedule, uh, keyword search for candles. And we've got candles. Okay. So we'll just use this one. Not a hundred percent sure if this one's correct. I haven't read through all of that, but, um, that's what you do. And this is going to basically customs are going to use this to check that the product, what the product is when you're shipping in and out of the country. Okay. So this is an important part. We're assuming here that we're selling these candles 
in the United States, and we're also having them made inside the United States. Variants. So let's say we were doing a few different variants. So the main candle we sell is uh, a certain size, and then we want to sell a slightly bigger size. Well, if that was the case, we could add in the large size, whatever size it was, we would enter the details in there. And we could do that a number of times to add a few different options. So that's an easy way to add variants if, if that's what you need to do. And yeah, the, the next probably important part to talk about is the website SEO. So this is actually quite important, I would say, for the long term. So there's lots of talented people you can speak to uh, about website SEO. It is another subject in itself. And once you start to build some traction, I would recommend investing in the SEO side of your business, either with your own knowledge or getting someone in that knows what they're doing. Um, but in here, we might, you know, our brand is unusual. Candles, roast beef candles might be the keyword that we've highlighted that we're going after. So what we would do is make sure we include it in our description, a bit like we do on Amazon, but make it natural, make it explain everything that we're selling and the exact description of the product, dismiss any concerns. And we would also make sure that we have that keyword, which we have here in the URL, okay? So that's important for SEO. I always say, if you're trying to rank for a particular keyword, long tails are obviously far easier to rank for. Make sure they're in your title, your description and your URL, okay? So we can save that nice and easy. As you can see, pretty easy, we've added our first product and we've matched it up with the information that we got from our Amazon seller account. And yeah, I think now what we need to talk about is the shipping and fulfillment side of things. So when it comes to Amazon FBA and actually connecting your Shopify store with your Amazon FBA, your Amazon Seller Central account, the best and the easiest way for me to explain this is because this is going to be slightly different for all of us is basically go to this link here and I'm going to leave a copy of this in the description below. And there are a few simple steps for you to do. So what we'll need to do is, first of all, activate Fulfillment by Amazon on your Shopify account. Now, a few important things that I should speak about here. If you are based in the US, Shopify automatically has an Amazon integration that you can set up using these steps on this page. But if you, and that also works whether you are in Canada, that's absolutely fine. But if you're outside of the US, if you're somewhere like I am in the UK or Europe, you will need to use an, an app to actually a third party integration, basically to connect your Shopify with your Amazon FBA account. Okay. So the app we have used and we've always used is Autodesk. So we've always used Autodesk to connect the two and we found it works really well. I haven't got any affiliate links for them, but this is Autodesk, very simple, autodesk.com. So if you are based in the UK or Europe, you can use this to connect Shopify to your Amazon FBA account. To actually connect Shopify to Amazon FBA, the first step, if you're based in the US or anywhere really, is to activate fulfillment by Amazon. So you should already have your Amazon seller account if you're watching this video. Uh, if not, you'll need to set that up. And on the Amazon Marketplace web service, Amazon MWS page, you can follow the instructions to just link your Shopify store to your Fulfillment by Amazon account. It's very, very easy to do. You can click continue to complete the process and it will return you straight to your Shopify store. Another thing I will just say again is once you've activated Fulfillment by Amazon, you should add your Amazon shipping rates to your own shipping settings, okay? Just so that you can keep track and make sure you know exactly what you're spending. Okay. When it comes to actually setting your shipping rates for fulfillment by Amazon, Amazon offer three shipping rates. Okay. At the time of recording, this is what they offer standard, expedited, and priority. Now, because we weren't linking our US Amazon account to Shopify, we used Autodesk and we could set this up very easily with rules so that we could offer these three options at the checkout. Okay. So that's going to be the next step for you to do. So what I would say is when you're ready to connect, use the link in the description and follow the steps laid out in the Shopify guide. And another thing I would add on the fulfillment side of things is obviously this video is all about Shopify and Amazon FBA, but you don't have to use Amazon FBA to, to store and fulfill your products if you use and want to set up a Shopify store. So maybe you just want to sell on Shopify, but you also don't want to ship out the products yourself. Well, you can use a company like Deliver, if you're based in the US, this will work really, really well. And what they will do is they have a network of warehouses. They will store and hold your products 
and post them out as orders come in. And as you can see here, they've got a very, very simple Shopify integration, just like you following the steps to connect Shopify to Amazon FBA. You can do exactly the same thing. Send your goods to deliver. Now, if you are an Amazon seller and you really want to scale up the Shopify side of your business, you probably are going to want different stock. So yeah, you're, you're not going to want to, as you really scale things, be sending people your products in Amazon packaging. Because if you link with Amazon FBA, that's what it's going to come in. So what you're probably going it's okay to do that to start with. And especially if you just want to capitalize on any brand awareness you've got and you want to get started, link to Amazon FBA. But if you want to scale things, then link up with someone like Deliver, set this up, and that way your customers will receive uh, products, your products in the boxes of your choice. So Deliver is a really good option. I know a lot of people that use it. That's an option if you don't want to use Amazon FBA, but you still don't want to handle the fulfillment side of things. Okay, so the last thing I'll talk about is the payment side of things. So in order to, this is very important, if you want to sell on Shopify, it's very important that you can collect payment from your customers. So you've got a few options here. You can use Shopify payments, which we've always used. Some people have said they, they've had problems with it. It depends what category you're in. But for us, it was very straightforward and it allows you to accept customer credit cards, debit cards. And yeah, it's very, very straightforward. So what I would say is at least set up Shopify payments. You'll need something and PayPal and an express checkout because especially with PayPal, it just instills a bit more trust with the customers. So yeah, that's a, a great thing to do. You can also set up Amazon Pay. I don't like to do that. Just want to keep it completely separate. Third party providers. So if you wanted to use, if you don't want to use Shopify payments, you can use someone external. That's not a problem. And you can set this all up here. So it really is up to you how you collect your money, but you're going to want to collect it, especially if you want to start selling and fulfilling products. So hopefully this is giving you a good guide to connecting Shopify to Amazon FBA. It's very, very straightforward. Now you know basically how to sync the two. This document that I will leave a link to will take you through the steps. And I think it's important that I just give you this URL because this will be constantly updated by Shopify and hopefully this video is around for a long time to come. If you've got any questions, jump into the comments below and ask away. If you do want to sign up to Shopify, you can use our link in the description below. We will make a commission, but it's, uh, it's a great way to show support for the channel. And guys, I think that's enough from me. So there'll be more useful content coming very soon.